is ready to roll. SSC with March 8 rolling. Clear supersonic. Clear supersonic. Clear supersonic. SSC is rolling. 650. This is the most extraordinary project I've ever, ever been involved in. Um, what we're doing is creating the, uh, the most advanced land speed record car that's ever been built. Bloodhound SSC has a very unusual objective for a land speed record project. It's not to set a speed or even a new record. It's to get everybody, everybody from 6 to 96 years old, interested and excited by mathematics, engineering, science, technology. The objective here is to, um, is to share the project and all its technology as widely as we possibly can. But the key thing to all this is education. Whether it could be bridges, whether it could be fashion, it could be fast cars. People love engineering. I am a Royal Air Force fighter pilot, but first and foremost, I'm a mathematician. And that is a way I not only think about the numbers, the incredible numbers involved with flying fast jets from day to day, but also the truly astonishing numbers that Bloodhound SSC is throwing up. Just to give you an idea, the bodywork at these speeds has got to take loads of the order of 12 tonnes per square metre. I mean, it's got to be as tough as a submarine. Nobody's ever done anything like this before. When we are accelerating this car, it's going to be peaking at 3G, 60 miles an hour per second. At peak speed, it will be covering the length of four football fields per second. The wheel rims will be experiencing 50,000 radial G at the rim. Those sorts of numbers are truly astonishing, and if you don't understand them, truly frightening. And as the driver, actually, that's not a good thing. I'm in the lucky position as the world's fastest mathematician of being able to understand and be comfortable with those numbers, understand the engineering solutions. We have to remember that this is an adventure. It's an engineering adventure. We don't know what the final outcome is going to be. And uh, even if we don't get to 1,000 miles per hour, it won't necessarily be a failure if what we have done is inspire people. There's going to be a huge industrial revolution. And to cope with this, we've got to have the scientists. We've got to have people studying mathematics, science, engineering. Because basically, unless we do this, Britain simply isn't going to be able to play.